I will begin this case study by introducing my client, Ben. When I received a phone call from a concerned relative, I scheduled a consultation session for the following week. The man who walked into my office that afternoon was not the business casual, antisocial man that had been described to me, but rather a flamboyant, theatrical, and dramatic man dressed in women's attire who called himself Lucky. He walked in with the expectation that I was with E! True Hollywood Story and had requested a private interview. This case is particularly intriguing, and his disorder is simultaneously difficult to diagnose. In this case, I will attempt to provide you with examples of Ben's symptoms, diagnosis, and my recommended treatment plan. Ben's symptoms range from those seen in personality disorders, trait personality disorders, alcoholism, and even dissociative identity disorder. As Ben, he is antisocial, avoidant of any type of close relationship, and lacks enjoyment in any of life's experiences. As Lucky, Ben is flirtatious, vague, emotional, theatrical, and lacks any real sincerity. The worrisome symptoms include destructive behavior and disregard for authority, which are exacerbated by the excessive alcohol consumption. Using a categorical model to diagnose these symptoms is problematic. For example, Ben is clearly exhibiting the first symptoms of dissociative identity disorder. However, the DSM-5 states that two or more distinct and separate personalities must be present in order to be accurately diagnosed. Therefore, a dimensional model, which allows for varying degrees of severity in a given disorder, to be taken into consideration for diagnosis. When Ben is sober and working in his day-to-day -day routine, his symptoms are primarily those of avoidant, antisocial personality disorder. As lucky, he exhibits symptoms primarily of histrionic personality disorder, quite the opposite set of symptoms considering the latter. I am most concerned with the alcohol abuse and the amnesia between his personalities. The DSM-5 defines continued alcohol use despite persistent or recurrent social or interpersonal problems caused or exacerbated by the effects of alcohol, as criteria for alcohol abuse, which Ben clearly meets. The DSM-5 also states, when the dissociative boundary between two distinct personality states is so great that those distinct personality states are unable to communicate with each other, the individual meets the first criteria for dissociative identity disorder. I am worried that if Ben continues through life the way he has been, Lucky will not be the only personality that attempts to compensate for the lack of substance in Ben's life. They call me an entrepreneur, but I call myself a renaissance man. I'm a part-time ventriloquist. I can play the piano, I can play the xylophone, I can play anything that you put my hands on. I'll play some f***ing knives and spoons if you want me to. Um, on an average day, Ben's pretty much a recluse. Um, I mean, his dad's business keeps him pretty cooped up. He doesn't really have that many friends or ambition. Um, he, to be honest, I, I don't know if it's ever been different. Um, and he's really hard to talk to. <sighs> he never got to know her mom. And I mean, I barely knew her. She died when I was only six. But I remember, you know, and my dad talked about her all the time and all of that excitement about having a baby brother before she died. It's just hard to forget. And I know she would have wanted um, me to look out for him in hindsight. I just wish I had been there sooner. How would you describe your brother, Ben? You know, at first I thought that he was just a shy guy who needed a push. Um, I noticed that he was a pretty heavy evening drinker, but I sort of just assumed that that was his way of opening up. 
Um, but putting on a dress and becoming another person entirely, especially the person that lasts longer than the drinks do, I mean, that's a problem. What's worse is that he doesn't remember them, blames them on the blackout. Um, I think he, I just think he needs the help that I can't give him. Um, I don't for one second believe that this isn't affecting his work. I had to bail Lucky out of jail twice in the last month, and I just keep waiting for that call that he's somewhere in a ditch. And I just couldn't live with myself without knowing that I did everything I could for him. Considering the vast symptomatic scale of this man, my treatment plan will be a dual diagnosis approach in which I will attempt to tackle more than one set of problems at a time. The important thing will be to find the relationship between each problem in order to make Ben aware of himself so that he may begin to lead a more happy, productive life. Since alcohol consumption worsens the symptoms Ben exhibits as lucky, this will be the first set of problems to tackle. I am concerned that since Ben is already having a difficult time submitting to therapy sessions, he will have an even more difficult time admitting to alcoholism. And even if Ben decides to commit to sobriety, Lucky may not be so easily persuaded. If Lucky becomes a danger to Ben, around-the-clock care may be necessary until we can hold sober therapy sessions. In terms of treating the clear symptoms of Ben's personality disorders, I will consider two methods. Steve DeShazer and Kim Berg were leaders in the treatment sessions called solution-based therapy, an idea in which the long-term personality changes are essentially put on the back burner and focus on solutions is the primary task. For instance, initially, rather than probing Ben with potentially painful questions about his past to try to identify the cause of his behavior, I will focus on aiding the discovery of his self-efficacy to help foster a sense of ambition and to encourage social relationships. This will give me an initial chance to identify his strengths before tackling his challenges. It will potentially give him the opportunity to build a relationship with Jan, the only resource he seemingly has at this point. Finally, I will strive to help give him both the courage and hope to assist him if and when we need to begin digging deeper into the darkness of his past. Jesus Christ! Another option is neuroleptic medication. My hope is that I can begin treatment without the use of antipsychotics. However, Ben's case is severe, and neuroleptic medication has proven to be helpful in the treatment of schizotypal and borderline personality disorder. Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors are also beneficial in cluster B personality disorders because they help to elevate the mood of the patient. This could help Ben to develop a happier take on life in general, which will foster goal setting for solution-based therapy. Additionally, I will consider the use of hypnosis if necessary to attempt to bring the awareness of Lucky into Ben's mind, as well as to encourage Ben to open up about his past. Since sexual abuse in childhood is directly linked to dissociative identity disorder, hypnosis may be beneficial in allowing Ben to talk about his past. In summary, Ben has a long road to recovery. If he can successfully achieve a sober mind, in addition to therapy and medication assistance, Ben could lead a life of his own, with his own relationships and ambitions. He can discontinue his reliance on Lucky to put him out into the world. With the help of therapy, Ben will be able to use his own unique set of strengths in his quest for self-fulfillment.